Hello and welcome to Eye on South Asia. I'm Bob Navanan. And I'm Sanjeev Pandya. Every week we'll cover the biggest headlines and events in the South Asian community. Sanjeev, on to our top stories for this week. Yes. So we're going to start off in Washington. Mm -hmm. One of the top issues that President Obama has been talking about in recent times is immigration reform. And that's right. It's on top of his agenda. It, on top of the agenda, yes. And, you know, he's been talking about giving a path of citizenship to illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. And, of course, one of the groups that will be affected are the Indian Illegal Immigrant Group, which... In a, in a very small way, but they'll be affected. But, you know, we did mention that they were, like, the sixth highest, you yes. know, immigration illegal immigrant group in the U.S. But the so entire, they are the, going to be but affected. But the entire immigration reform is being done, you know, keeping Latinos in the mind, you know? Exactly, in, yes. In this uh, second term election, they showed up at the booth and Obama got re-elected, mm -hmm. so now Obama has so to So he pay wants back. to put, yeah, he wants to put that on his agenda this, this term. Yes. So um, in order to get this bill passed, he's trying to make the process a little bit easier, mm -hmm. and the White House really wants to bring in outside leaders yes. of several different kinds, like CEO, law enforcement officials, on a number of different issues, so immigration reform is one of them, and they really want to get a better perspective from each of these different And not fields. to mention, and not to forget, community leaders also. Yes. Besides, you know, stakeholders, CEOs, and all these big names, community leaders, I think they play a very important role in giving out suggestions and ideas uh, to the President of the United States on how immigration reform should be done, what should be uh, considered, and what should be not considered. Yeah, so what Obama did was mm -hmm. he invited a group of 16 progressive uh, labor leaders from all over the country to engage in a dialogue, and among these 16 people are two Indian Americans. Deepak Bhargava and Deepa Ayer. Yes, and Deepak Bhargava is from the Center for Community Change, and Deepa Ayer is from South Asian Americans Leading Together, or right. SALT. Yes. <laughs> so with, you know, with South Asians, they actually have a little bit more on the immigration issue. They also have like the H-1B issue that they're okay. dealing with. So okay. um, I wonder if that's actually going to be grouped into this discussion and be part of the, mm -hmm. the larger discussion of immigration right. reform. So this is also, I think Obama is um, you know, continuing his effort in making immigration reform real possible. And it could happen actually sometime in 2013, sometime this year it could happen. Right. Well, basically the process would be... Um, you know, the Senate would need to come up with a consensus, right. I would say like March, April, yes. right? And then it would need to get through to the House in the fall and then by the end of the year, by which the is his year. goal, mm -hmm. he's going to have to sign the bill. Yep. So that is what's on President Obama's agenda. And of course, what is not on his agenda that uh -huh. we're talking about, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal. Now, he, this is what I really you know, <laughs> don't understand. Bobby Jindal, I think he's one of those um, a topmost Republicans who's been going out ever since election ended and ever since Obama got reelected and he's been saying that we as a Republican Party need to work on our core issues. We need to uh, be part of middle class Americans. We need to send out our message clearly. We need to make sure that we get their votes because to lose two elections in a row, it's not easy. That's you know, what he goes out and he's been on, on a late night shows, um, in the medias, on TVs and everywhere he's been saying that, right? Yeah. And then someone asked him that, uh, and then he goes, then he says further that if anyone is thinking about running for uh, president in 2016, they yeah. need to have their head examined, right? Yeah. And okay. then here, here a reporter asked him a question, are you going to be running in 2016? <laughs> of course not. I mean, he, <laughs> right. It, the whole idea behind Bobby Jindal right after the November elections, right. going on all these talk shows, Everyone started getting this idea. You know, this guy is really trying to turn his party around. Mm. He has something to do with a presidential bid in 2016. Right. And now he's saying, you know, anyone even considering the idea is half crazy. So, no, but then he doesn't want to do anything 
uh, you know, by himself. He doesn't want to come up with any suggestions or ideas or thoughts into it. He wants Republican Party to to do it, and he's out there criticizing everybody else. I well, mean, seriously, a, this is not a way bit, to do it, Bobby. He's Kendall. a little bit vague on yeah. the issues. He's, you know, he said one thing that. Um, a lot of the public, they actually voted for Obama even without realizing that, you know, they wanted small government, but they and they wanted government to kind of step back and not have so much control. Right. But they still voted for Obama. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So he's saying that really their problem is getting the message out and really, you know, reshaping the Republican Party. Maybe he's actually, you know, kind of targeting the Tea Party, you know, and some of these far right movements. I don't think you need to have any soft corners for Bobby Jindal on this <laughs> on this issue. Okay. <laughs> well believe yeah. me. I, I think don't. I think I think he's totally wrong on, on what he's doing right now. He should be coming out with some suggestions. He's the governor of Louisiana State, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he he can definitely offer some suggestions and a guidelines and everything, but no, he wants the Republican Party to do it. And how could you make a comment that, you know, if anyone, uh, you know, decides to run or if anyone announces that they'll be running for a president in 2016, they need to have their head examined, quote, unquote. Well, well what he's saying is, you know, they've lost two elections, so they yeah. really need to step back and understand what their core values is and, you know, just retrain harder before they get knocked out by the Democrats again. My point that's, is... That's his point. My point is that someone else needs to have head examined, and that person <laughs> is be. in the center of the story that we just talked about. Could be, yeah. And, you know, he might just be alienating a lot of people in yeah. his party. I, actually, Donald Trump was that one of these is, guys. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> who that's, who that's came after one, one comment that he made on Fox News, Bobby Jindal, had said that um, the, the party needs to stop being the stupid party. Hmm. And Donald Trump was like, whoa, you hmm. know, this, is, this doesn't sound like the kind of language we need to be using for our own party because it's just going to give ammunition for the Democrats. True in the form of sound bites to throw back at us, right. you know. So oh, well, well. we're going to see if Bobby Jindal's comments are going to gain traction or if he's going to just stir more controversy. Like no, no, this. his comments are gaining more attraction, for sure, but in the wrong way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so speaking of controversy, India's actually in hot water. Um, what is recently, this all about? I mean, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to tell you what that's all about. So they're in hot water for their national solar program. And the U U.S. is actually saying that they're violating global trade rules. Exactly. So what exactly is a violation of, of a global trade rules? Well, you know, uh, the U.S. basically says that India happens to be, it happens to have this kind of... Um, discriminatory policy mm. where they're rewarding their own manufacturers to create their own solar cells and oh. equipment and modules and offering incentives for domestic developers and not giving incentives for imports from the U.S. So basically the U.S. wants to sell their solar cells and their equipment to India and India is kind of blocking that. But don't they know? That, and the U.S. is very angry about this, and so they're taking it to the World Trade Organization. They filed a complaint, and they're saying they're they're putting pressure on India for this. But don't U.S. know that is an Indian way of doing business? I, I mean, it's a self-sufficient way of doing business. But if it's a global and, trade rules, and if right. it's a violation of one of those rules, then obviously India is under hot water. Yeah. Right. And, you know, along with the U.S., the European Union and Japan and are Japan. behind the U.S. on this stance because they are basically saying, well, we're all subjected to these rules and India should be no exception, kind of keeping that manufacturing within. Um, and, you know, the U.S. obviously wants um, kind of revenue and all that stuff for their corporations mm. and to make uh, money and, um, you know, to boost the U.S. economy. So, so this case, which is filed by U.S., United States, against India, and the case targets India's national solar policy, that's a Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, known as JNN, mm -hmm. SN, and that program was launched in 2010. Right. And it, the final word here for now is that if India doesn't resolve this issue in about 60 days, the U.S. is basically going to take this to the 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 World Trade Organization Dispute Settlement Panel is going to be like this court hearing almost. Um, so there's pressure on India to kind of conform to this. All right. So the point is that we're going to come back after 60 days and uh, give you more 
comment on <laughs> sure, this Sure, we will. If, if there's more controversy afterwards. After yeah. 60 days, of course, we'll have other comments on that. Yeah. So while the whether the U.S. really loves um, India's trade policies or mm. not, they actually love Indian festivals That's right. and religious sort of uh, rituals, I should say. So um, This is the largest gathering in the world. Yeah. Right? Now... I thought the largest gathering was like a carnival in Brazil, or um, there's a word for it. There's a, a this festival that they celebrate. Uh, there's a, a popular word for it, which I forgot. It's it's basically like a kind of carnival kind of celebration in Brazil. Right. Which uh, yeah, they kind of have it in a lot Cinco of European Mayo. countries. Cinco de Mayo, uh -huh. I think, right? And then you have a Mardi Gras, and you know all the other festivals which are known uh, to attract a huge number of people. But this one, officially now they say this is the largest public gathering in the world. It's Mahakum Mela, mm -hmm. which happens every 12 years. Yeah. I missed it last year. I missed it, uh, I missed it last time, this time, but I hope not to miss it next time. <laughs> right. Hopefully be, we'll b all be around. 2025? Of course. <laughs> right. 2025. So the, it's actually a, a, a sacred pilgrimage mm. where you know hundreds of or i should hundreds. say millions of exactly people, um you know come to different locations in india and essentially you know they they kind of travel but they also one of the most important things is they take the sacred bath mm. in the river mm. and this year it started on january 14th and the day of the sacred bath was february 10th and it's right. you know been known to be the world's biggest bathing day um as many as a hundred million people have been estimated to attend this year. Okay, this Mahakum Mela actually takes place in the city of Allahabad, mm -hmm. and um, and I think during this Mahakum Mela, the entire city becomes like pop-up mega city. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, not only it becomes uh, uh, you know center of the world during Mahakum Mela, and hundreds of thousands of millions of people gather together but how this city has planned out all the little stuff into it from health to emergency to sanitization and the hospitals and everything and that's why it has become uh, a case for study for faculty of arts and science of harvard university yeah actually you know a team of faculty and students from several of Harvard's colleges, you know, all the way from arts and sciences, design school, yeah. med school, all of that stuff, they're actually taking a trip to Allahabad, and uh, they're calling this project Mapping India's Kumela. They're going to be really studying all these issues of engineering, kind of social engineering and zoning and all those issues that you mentioned, as well as how they really set up entertainment for this many people. Um, you know, it takes a lot of planning and preparation. But one thing is, actually, this festival doesn't have any sort of scientific way that they seem to handle all of these these things. Um, we'll find out in their study. But yeah. I think they're kind of late for this year. They should have been there a month ago. They should have been. But, you know, I mean, this this goes over several days. Yeah, I know that. But yeah. like you said, uh, how, how long is, the, is this festival, actually? Uh, I don't know, uh, almost a month or so. Right. Well, I February think it's 10th, February 10th was the second biggest uh, day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think the biggest day was like January 14th was the biggest day. Right. right. And February 10th was, uh, you know, also another important day for them. And now they're going to be going over there. So it's kind of late. Yeah. But Harvard actually, they haven't released really what they're going to be using this research for you know is it going to be curiosity what's that just a curiosity just i mean it, it could be um you know in order to plan events in the u.s could be like religious no, events think, in the u.s no maybe i think political i think, events, I think, I think their goal like is that. to go and study and find loopholes find wrong things into it drawbacks and everything and then address it and say they should have done this this was not right and that was not right and this is how it should be done and uh, and hopefully, um, next Mahakum Mela, which will be in 2025, mm -hmm. so Howard University and Faculty of Arts and Science can offer suggestions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they'll be there at the forefront of exactly. it at that point. Um, there's just one thing that I wonder, though. 100, 100 million people bathing in one river, that, that's got to be a pretty dirty river at that point, I would say. No, not really. It's, it's just a sacred river. Exactly. It's a very sacred river. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know. You don't use word dirty for Mahakum Mela. Nothing's dirty. It's, it's a sacred it's all event. It's sacred. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And that's why they call 
pilgrims. Yeah. They're, they're, they're called pilgrims. They're not people attending Mahakumbh Mela. It's pilgrims. Uh -huh. Pilgrims from all over the world go to Allahabad during this Mahakumbh Mela. Okay, Sanjeev, we're going to take a short break. And we'll be right back on Ion South Asia. Stay tuned. <laughs> 